Financial experts estimate that the crypto universe is worth an estimated $3.6 trillion. But many governments are struggling to figure out how to regulate this burgeoning financial marketplace. And in the United States, for instance, the push for regulation is likely to cause significant friction in Congress. So stay tuned and don't go away because the race to regulate the $3.6 trillion crypto universe is on. And we're looking at how governments are handling the future of cryptocurrency. First up, why is it necessary to regulate the crypto market in the first place? Let's find out. The short answer is to protect investors and prevent massive amounts of fraud from taking place. As the popularity of cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin explodes around the world, the Biden administration is planning some strict regulations for America's crypto universe, and it's likely to spark a considerable battle in Congress. Some congressional lawmakers are concerned that the U.S. might miss out on the opportunity to be leaders in this new digital cryptocurrency revolution. Take, for instance, Republican Cynthia Loomis. Loomis is a senator from Wyoming, a rancher, and a hodler. Cynthia Sutton Law has a shirt that says, friends don't let friends sell Bitcoin. And that is Loomis's personal investment strategy when it comes to Bitcoin. And if you're asking yourself, well, what the heck is a hodler? Simply put, it's crypto geek talk for a person that buys cryptocurrency and holds onto it with faith and loyalty, despite its extremely high volatility. Loomis claims that she paid $330 for her first Bitcoin back in 2013, and today her coin is worth roughly $60,000. Loomis has since purchased more Bitcoin, which in essence means that she stands to personally gain or lose from legislation and regulation that she'll be voting on. Seems like a major conflict of interest, does it not? In any event, it's Loomis's hope that Wyoming becomes one of the world's first crypto capitals. Next up, what does NPR's David Gura have to say about Wyoming becoming the crypto capital of the world? Let's take a look. Loomis is well-versed in the concept of Bitcoin mining too, and claims that Bitcoin mining is a big thing in Wyoming. The idea of mining Bitcoin resonates with Loomis a lot. Financial insider David Gura says, Wyoming appeals to Bitcoin miners who continuously use computers to crack codes to create new cryptocurrency. That's an energy-intensive process, and Wyoming is an energy-rich state. It also has light regulations and provides tax incentives. And Loomis is calling on Congress to follow Wyoming's lead. Loomis has repeatedly said, We want the innovators to innovate. We want to create a space where the United States is the leader in opportunity for the creation and use of digital assets. But Gura argues that Loomis's approach to regulation puts her at odds with an outspoken member of the Senate Banking Committee, tough Democrat Elizabeth Warren, who wants stricter rules regarding crypto and tougher regulations. Cryptocurrency is quickly becoming a popular investment around the world, but it's also earned a bad reputation for how it's used for organized crime, money laundering, and frequent ransomware attacks. Warren even told Bloomberg TV that the cryptocurrency market is like the Wild West. Up next, why does Elizabeth Warren want to crack down on crypto? Let's dig a little deeper. Warren says, right now, our regulators, and frankly our Congress, is an hour late and a dollar short, and we need to catch up with where these cryptocurrencies are going. And it's Gura's contention that the worldwide market cap for crypto is somewhere close to $2.5 trillion. This would mean that crypto's market cap is almost as large as the GDP of France. Even several of the big Wall Street banks now trade in Bitcoin. And the head of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Gary Gensler, agrees with Warren's sounding of the alarm bells. Gensler recently said, This asset class is rife with fraud, scams, and abuses in certain applications. There's a great deal of hype and spin about how crypto assets work. Gensler wants congressional lawmakers to offer more support and more resources, and this is what is making Senator Loomis nervous. Loomis is concerned that more rules and regs will make the U.S. less competitive. The crypto industry, too, is fighting back. It spent more than $2.5 million lobbying lawmakers. Republican Congressman Warren Davidson asserts that Congress must make a decision regarding what to do with cryptocurrency, and soon. Davidson says, the industry is basically pleading, give us some regulatory clarity. Up next, what does Gira think about Davidson's comments? Let's find out. According to Gira, Davidson also fears too much regulation could harm investors and entrepreneurs, but he thinks inaction is also a risk. Davidson says, when he goes back to his district in Ohio, his constituents ask him when Congress is going to get around to setting ground rules. Davidson clearly thinks that Congress is confused and undecided when it comes to the crypto issue. Davidson says maybe the best answer is slowly at first and then all of a sudden, which is the same way people go bankrupt, by the way. Gear is quick to point out that as the industry continues to grow, the popularity and price of cryptocurrency skyrocket, and Davidson says he and his colleagues have to get moving now, even if it involves a big fight. Davidson's approach does seem reasonable and rational. This is a conversation that Congress should be having now and not later. Some members of Congress, though, have a complete different mentality. Some members of Congress feel that if you can't beat them, join them and regulate them. Many feel that the largely unregulated crypto market is here to stay and that it would be best to draw cryptocurrencies into the mainstream rather than have them on the outer periphery of the financial system. Stay tuned and don't go away because we've got the latest on all things crypto coming your way. Next up, what does the U.S. Federal Reserve Board, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the U.S. Office of the Comptroller of Currency have to say about regulating the crypto universe? You're about to find out. The three or four 
aforementioned agencies released the following joint statement. The disruptors will be disrupted, but the payoff for the crypto promoters and their investors should be greater credibility, enhanced access to investment dollars, and inclusion within the mainstream of financial activity. We recognize that the emerging crypto asset sector presents both potential opportunities and risks for banks, their customers, and the financial system. It is important to provide clarity in order to promote safety and soundness, consumer protection and compliance, with applicable laws and regulations, including anti-money laundering and illicit finance laws and rules. The primary focus of the three agencies is to figure out how banks will be involved in crypto-related activities, specifically the identification of key risk factors, consumer protection, and various other legalities. These agencies also studied how existing financial laws and regulations would impact banks dealing with crypto. And it's also clear that these agencies are looking at how other nations plan on dealing with crypto. In their joint statement, they said, Around the world, central banks and financial regulators, including the Reserve Bank and the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, are looking at how to respond to the proliferation of crypto assets and the increasing number of their citizens holding or trading them. Up next, what is happening with cryptocurrency regulation in one of the world's most populated countries? Let's find out. Back in April of 2018, India's Finance Ministry appointed a committee to propose a draft bill that would regulate cryptocurrencies, but it did not recommend an all-out ban. But in a stunning reversal in February of 2019, the committee proposed a new draft bill and recommended a total ban. However, in March of 2020, something big happened. The Supreme Court of India lifted the ban on cryptocurrency, which restricted banks and financial institutions from giving access to banking services to people engaged in trading crypto assets. And between January and October of 2021, India's Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, chaired a meeting to discuss the issues in greater detail. On February 9th, Finance Minister Sitaraman said, a high-level interministerial committee constituted under the chairmanship of the Secretary of Economic Affairs should study the issues related to virtual currencies and propose specific actions to be taken in the matter recommended in its report that all private cryptocurrencies, except any virtual currencies issued by the state, will be prohibited in India. India's Minister of State for Finance, Anurag Thakur, told Parliament that the government planned to propose a bill on cryptocurrencies as the existing laws have been deemed inadequate for dealing with cryptocurrencies. Another report suggests that India will proceed with proposing a law that would ban cryptocurrencies and levy a hefty fine against anyone in the country trading or even holding crypto assets. Finally, what will crypto regulation in the U.S. look like? When the regulations do come, all of them will likely come fast, hence the reason that there has been such intense research and analysis of cryptocurrencies lately. In 2021, the interest of politicians in crypto has increased tenfold. Some suspect that this sudden interest has been fueled by Facebook's goal of issuing its own stablecoin and China's goal of providing a digital yuan and the country's accelerated growth in decentralized finance activity lately. It's really going to be interesting seeing how all of this plays out, but it seems as though we can expect crypto regs to vary wildly from one nation to the next. And that's a wrap for today's video. Be sure to hit us with a like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on the awesome videos coming your way.